Hi everyone, I'm Georges Saint-Pierre. Welcome to my Rush Fit warm-up. This program has been designed by Eric Owens. The Rush Fit warm-up is a multifaceted warm-up that uses only body weight motions and allows you to work every muscle of your body in a functional manner to get you ready for the work to come in the rounds. So let's not waste too much time, guys. Let's go and get started here with a shoulder width stance, and we're just gonna do some torso twists. So as you notice, I wanna get my elbows up about shoulder height. They can dip down a little bit, that's okay. And I pick a good pivot point on the ground. I wanna rotate back and forth. Imagine that my elbows, if there's a line, just about going about 180 degrees, if there's a sphere here, right? I don't wanna go too far. I don't wanna go all the way around here. I don't wanna injure myself. Because remember, we're just warming up. We're trying to get the body loose, core temperature up, so we don't injure ourselves, and we're ready for the work to come. The body is like an elastic. If you try to stretch an elastic when it's cold, it's gonna snap. If you try to stretch it when it's warm, now you're gonna be able to play with it. Now we're doing each exercise for 60 seconds. So right now we have about 10 seconds left, and then we're gonna switch and go into our next exercise, which is a side bend. Let's keep going though, guys. We have about five seconds. All right, good job. So now here in our stance, we're just gonna lean to one side, kicking our hip out, reaching over, then going to the other side. This is a side bend, and what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna bend forward and then over. We wanna keep our body stacked, meaning knee, hip, shoulder, everything in alignment. We let the hip kick out to the side and we reach. This is gonna be stretching the muscles of the hips and of the lats. And this is a very important movement pattern in most functional fitness and in fighting. You have to be able to move side to side as well as forward and backwards. Like every other exercise, you start slowly and you try to pick it up as time goes on. Now we have about 20 seconds left in this. And also work at your own rate. If you find you're starting to fatigue, the form's starting to go away, step back, maybe take a few deep breaths and get back at it. 10 more seconds, guys. Warm up is very important. It prevents injuries and it allowed us to have our full range of motion. Okay, great job. Now let's turn and face this direction and we're gonna come down onto our fingers, walking out into the plank position and we're gonna walk our feet up to our hands. And you just turn, switch directions and go back in the other direction. This is a great way to stretch all the muscles on the back side of the body. We're also activating the core. We're starting to get things a little bit, the difficulty is increasing here now. So you might find that your body temperature is increasing, that's good. You should be starting to sweat probably around this point, maybe within a couple more exercises. The difficulty, the complexity is gonna increase. And one of the things you might notice, so Victoria, if you can, let's do a modification, let's do a bent knee modification. So Victoria happens to have great flexibility, but if her flexibility wasn't so good, she's gonna come up like this, she's gonna kinda tuck under, and she's gonna lower down with a bent knee position. That's gonna allow her to get down there on the ground, walk herself out, and she walks her feet up, she'll also do it in a bent knee position. All right, great job, Victoria. Okay, about five more seconds, guys. Let's try to get one more. Okay, now up and standing, we're gonna take a move from Capoeira, okay? We're gonna do the jingo. We're gonna go side to side, so it's like a backward lunge. We bring one hand in front, so yeah, your defending hand up a little bit higher, George, come up in front of the face, and we go side to side. This is a great move, develop fluidity. Basically, it's a backward lunge. We go side to side, and Capoeira has some very effective techniques, and this is when the base moves of Capoeira. I'm sure none of us are very good at it, but still a fun exercise, and it's a great variation of a lunge. Capoeira, it's a martial art from Brazil. It's also a style of dancing. Yeah, and this is one of their base motions. It's a great way to warm up the body. Moving back and forth, we have the coordination here. We're lunging back with one leg, then back with the other. About 10 more seconds to go here, and then we're gonna do our walkout push-up. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now here, shoulder with stance. We're gonna lower down, squatting. We're gonna walk out into the full push-up position. Hands underneath the shoulders, lower down, then come back up. Try to stress getting a full range of motion here. So you squat all the way down, get your hands under the ground, you walk out to get your hands underneath your shoulders. You don't want them far back, you don't want them too far forward. A good alignment, lower down, chest to the deck, press all the way up, then back in the standing. Okay, now we're about halfway into it, guys, so 30 more seconds. 
And you'll notice as when they come back up into the standing position, we want to make sure our heels get on the ground before we stand up. And let's check out Victoria's form here. So if you start to fatigue a little bit, it's okay to lower down your knees. It's also okay to restrict your range of motion if necessary. If you can't lower all the way down, what you don't want to have happen is lead with your head or collapse in the core. You want to keep the core activated at all times, maintain good alignment, ear, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle. Okay, now back in the standing, guys. We're going to come here, feet together, and lateral lunges going side to side. Try to imagine your feet are running down parallel lines here. We don't want our toes pointing too far out or too far in. When we take our step out too, we want to sit back into our heel. Notice how the trail leg stays straight. The lead leg is a leg that bends. The hands raise up as a counterbalance, and that's also activating the muscles in the shoulders. It's giving us a full body warm up. Remember, functional training is about using all muscles of the body, not just one or two. Halfway there, guys. And if you notice, they're not working at a, at a breakneck speed. The speed is enough to make sure that they're working, but yet, this isn't really a workout yet, this is mirror, it's a warm up. We're just getting the body warm and loose. If you're finding you're out of breath and you're about to pass out, you probably need to slow down a little bit and do a little bit less repetitions. Find your own speed and figure out what works for you. It's Almost important. There, huh? important to make the blood circulate everywhere, in every muscle, in every joint of our body, to prevent injuries. You know, it's very important. Okay, now we're in our stance. Let's lower it down. We're gonna walk out and we're gonna do our push up with a lateral hold here, okay? So we're gonna come up, a lateral plank. We lower down to the push-up and back out. All right, guys, let's get on it. Walk out, and once you get out into that push-up position, you're gonna maintain that push-up position. So we're all the way down, you open up, you rotate. So notice how they rotate on their feet completely. They rotate, and after they hold a five-second hold, they lower back down. Good. And if you find that a five second hold is not really challenging. Try to hold it 10 seconds. Try to hold 20 seconds. Try to hold 30 seconds. Do the best you can. But five seconds usually does the trick. And the key is you don't want your core to sag. You want to keep your hips up in the air. That's going to activate your obliques. Now, Victoria, when you lower down, if you can't do a knee push up, so lower back down, lower down to your knees. Then you're going to come up and then she raise off your knees. Yeah, so that's totally acceptable. You can lower down to your knees in order to do this. Okay, excellent. Now let's walk back up into the standing position. And that's gonna set you guys up in the perfect position for your air squat, okay? So as you're here, you just wanna lower down, thighs to parallel, hands up as a counterbalance, come back into standing, all the way up, all the way down. Already start breaking a sweat now. That's a good thing. Now if you notice key things here, their knees aren't going too far forward. The knees initiate the motion, but then they start to sit back and down. They don't round here at the back and collapse to keep themselves up. If you start to collapse, you probably need to shorten your distance, shorten the depth of your squat. You want to push down into your heel, heels. You want to activate all the muscles in the posterior chain, your hamstrings, your glutes. Good core activation, proper alignment of the spine. And there again, you're not trying to do as many reps as possible. You're just trying to do good repetitions, full range of motion. About 15 more seconds. Breathing is very important too. Inhale by the nose, exhale by the mouth. Okay, excellent work. Now, let's walk out here, okay? And as we get down here, we're gonna get in the quadruped position, meaning I want my hands underneath my shoulders and I want my knees underneath my hips. A wide enough base so I have stability, but not too wide. Then I'm gonna go opposite knee to elbow, extend, hold five, four, Three, two, one, then back in. We're gonna stay on the same side. Now stay on the same side, everybody. So you're just gonna switch opposite knee to opposite elbow. Three, two, one. Keep going, in and out. Five, four, three, two, one. Two more times. Five, four, three, two, one. One more time. Five, four, three, two, one. Now let's switch sides. So get your stance in place, drop your base, and go. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Three more. Five, four, three, two, one. Two more. Five, 
four, three, two, one. One more, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent work. Now let's come around to a line position, lying face up, okay? And now we're gonna do our straight up, okay? So we're pulling our toes back towards us, hands are overhead. We're gonna try to sit straight up and touch the ceiling here, okay? And then we're gonna lower right back down, right when the hands touch, right back up. We're gonna finish off with one minute of this, and that will complete our warm up. Remember that this is not a race, this is just a warm up. The importance of this is the form. And it's not the repetition, it's not the number of repetition. It's to be able to break a little bit of sweat and ready to go for a, after, to be ready for a hard workout. That's a very good point, George. And if you notice, George is sweating. Everybody here is sweating. It's, it's a difficult warm up, but yet everybody's able to talk. Everyone's able to still interact. They're not at that point where the, you know, they're filled with lactic acid. We're not working out yet. Just getting everything loose and ready. About 10 more seconds. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job, everybody. That completes our warm up, and now we're ready to attack the real workout. Congratulations, everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Georges St. Pierre and welcome to my Stretching for Flexibility program workout with the designer of it, Eric Owing. Okay guys, what we're going to do here is a program that you're going to look at and it's going to think it's a little bit easier than the other ones, and it is. But you shouldn't bypass this or think that it's not necessary. This is the thing about this is like the kind of the yin to the yang. This is a soft work, okay? So we, this is very necessary to maintain proper range of motion and to keep the body loose and flexible. So. You shouldn't bypass this routine. You should definitely include it in your program. Um, some of the exercises seem easy, and they are sort of easy, but it's more about keeping your range of motion, your joints healthy and functional, okay? So let's go ahead and start off here with our hands on our hips, okay? And we're just gonna start off doing neck rotations, making big circles. And what we're gonna do is go slow. You don't have to go quick at all. And the whole idea is we're going in 15 seconds in one direction, and then we switch directions. Okay guys, good, and switch, other direction. And we kind of want to hit every joint in the body from head to toe in the beginning. This is just loosening up the body. If you've been working out hard all week, you definitely need this. Okay, great, and now shoulder rotations, going forward first. And if you notice, I kind of touch my palms right as I bring it to the front, or I'm sorry, the back of my hand as I bring it to the front. This is okay. important to prevent injuries. Switch directions. Prevent injuries and keep our joint, our joint healthy to have a better range of motion. This is very important. Like I said, this seems easy and it is relatively easy, but necessary. Okay, now we have spine rotations. And you notice this is the same as in the warm up. We're going to do it a little bit slower and just try to stress a full range of motion. Really working on all the muscles. It allows us to rotate our body around our spine. Now this one we just stay going for 30 seconds. Importance, the importance of breathing to remember and keep thinking about it. Breathe to, through the stretch. Okay guys, now we're gonna clasp our hands and just rotate. Yeah, just like that. We wanna try to go in one direction the whole time, then we'll switch and we'll go 15 seconds in the other direction. This is just trying to keep the wrist nice and healthy. This is very important because the number of punches that I throw and switch for, directions. In Sorry, in tra the number of punches that I throw in training is it, it, it's it's incredible. So, as a, with the impact, it's very important to keep that joint healthy. Yes, very. Okay, now let's come here. Okay, we're just going to switch and go inside the side. Imagine you're turning your hands up like you're looking at a tray. You can do a little bend in the arms too. This is keeps the elbows and the shoulders healthy. Kind of just turn and look. Going side to side. You guys are doing great. About 10 more seconds. Good. Okay, and now hands on the hips, and like we have a big hula hoop, okay? We're gonna make big rotations here, going around. 
And if you feel comfortable, you can go a little quicker. And if you want, you can stay moving slow. And if you feel a tight spot, you can kind of hang around there for a second. Okay, let's switch directions. Go in the other direction now. Very important to have a full range of motion. Try to go as far as you can, as long as it, as it, it, it is comfortable. You don't, you're not supposed to, to, to feel any discomfort. Okay, now knees together, slight bend in the knees, and knee rotation, same thing. We're going in one direction, 15 seconds, and then we'll switch. And it's very important we do this to keep all of the joints healthy, not just one or two, but all of them. Okay, and switch sides, other direction. So this is a little slow, but you'll find it starts picking up in difficulty as we start hitting the stretches. We have one more here, okay, and that's going to be our ankle. So we're just going to get up on the ball of our big toe and just try to pivot around there. The same thing will go 15 seconds one side, and then other side, guys, 15 seconds to the inside. Ankle, it's, all, it's very important. Also, people forget about it because it supports the, the whole weight of our body mm -hmm. almost 24-7 or, or, or not, not 24-7, but at, at almost the half-half of the and day. switch sides. Yeah, you'll find if, you know, someone puts you in a footlock and they break your ankle during the fight, that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. You can't really do too much. This actually helps the body have a resistance to a joint lock because it switch directions. Increases the range of motion a little bit. And maybe this will save you one day in a fight. A lot of injury that happen to, to a lot of knees injuries are caused because of the the stability of the ankle. So it's very important to maintain that joint very healthy. Okay, so now here we have our feet shoulder width. Okay, we're going to do our four bends. It's going to be a little more active now. And what we want to do, if you notice, when I do the bend, I'm coming with my hips are kicking back away from the center line. I'm trying to touch down. If I need to, I can bend my knees, but I want to try to refrain from that if possible. So we're going to reach up and touch down. Touch the hips up, touch the hips down. We're always going to go back to the hips, okay? Let's go, guys. And reach up, touch the hips, touch down. Up and down. And like I said, well, I can't stress this enough. This is the soft work. This is very necessary. We all want to do the hard stuff. We want to do the stuff that makes us sweat, all the stuff that, you know, you feel the burn, you feel like you're building strength, endurance, all that, but don't neglect flexibility. It's extremely important. Yin and yang. Yep. This is the yin side. This is the, what they would call the soft side. We train hard, everyone, but we train smart. This is very important. We need to be hard, but sometimes we need softness as well to equilibrate it. Very true. Guys, you're almost there. About 15 more seconds. Good. If you know Victoria, she has good flexibility. She can get her whole palm on the ground. That's great. If you can do that, by all means do so. If you need to bend your knees a little, you can do that too. And you'll find out that you're getting more flexible as, as the workout goes on because you get more warmed up. Yeah, you're loosening up. Okay, now let's come here and we're going to go do our side bend, but we're going to exaggerate it. Unlike the warm up, we're going to kind of stick to one side for a few seconds, then slowly transfer over to the other side. You just want to go side to side on your own rhythm. If you find you're really tight, take your time there. Kind of hang out for an extra few seconds. Everybody's got to kind of make their own personal variation of this. Excellent. Very important to inhale as the stretch goes on. Keep breathing, breathing through it, through, through the stretch. Now, these stretches, like I said, they kind of build a complexity as we go. And we're almost at the end of this one. And our next one, what we're going to do is we're going to come into a straddle position, okay? So, we're gonna come right here like this. We're gonna to try to point our feet, just like we're doing our lateral lunge. We're gonna to try to be running down parallel lines with our feet. Now, we're gonna go side to side, but we're gonna hold on one side for 30 seconds and then go to the other side, okay? So let's start by going to our right side. That means our left leg's gonna stay straight. We can stick our hands out, and if you want, there's no reason to force yourself too hard there with your arms. You don't have to fatigue your arms. You can just lower down here and hold. That's totally acceptable. You should feel this in your left adductor, okay? That's your inner thigh. If you're not feeling it there, you might have to adjust your foot position. If your feet are turned in that way, 
it might not work. So we want our feet facing, like I said, parallel lines. Try to hang out here a little bit longer. And we're gonna come up and go to the other side now. This is a very, especially for me, this is a very important exercise because I got a, I, I got an adductor pull, pull my adductor during one of my competition. And uh, this is an exercise uh, that I need to do uh, every week to keep my, my, my joint healthy. This is very important for me. Yeah. It also helps with kicking, lunging, pretty much everything that you're gonna do. Absolutely. Okay, now let's come back to this middle position here, okay? And now we're gonna go do a single hamstring, okay? So we're gonna go first towards our left hamstring. You just wanna try to come down. If you can tuck your head down to your shin, that's fine, but it's not necessary. If you can just get here, that's fine. Even if here you feel stretched, that's fine. Try to find the range of motion that you feel the stretch and try to hang out there for a little bit. And just don't forget to breathe. A lot of people forget to breathe when they're stretching and that's not good. You guys have to maintain a good position, but a position where it allows you to still breathe normal and natural. Okay, so now from here, we're gonna come up into the neutral position, and we're gonna switch and go to the other side now, towards the right leg. Just try to relax the muscles. You know, find sometimes, if you're not getting enough of a stretch, by contracting the muscle opposite. So right now, if I were to contract my quadricep muscle here, I might feel a little bit more of a stretch in my hamstring. And if you want a little bit of an extra boost, that's a good way of getting it. Okay, great job, guys. Now, back up in the standing. Now we're gonna do a, a squatting adductor stretch, okay? So we're gonna squat towards our right leg. We'll go up on the ball of my foot here, and my toes are pointing up in the air. I feel this one in the adductor as well, too, George? Absolutely. And for you, this is a very necessary stretch. Sometimes during some stretches, you might, especially if, you feel, if you're a little bit claustrophobic, you might feel like you have a hard time breathing. Try to relax. If it's really a, a really bad discomfort, just come up and, you know, don't go that far, you know? You have to, it's not good if you feel any discomfort doing this. You have to go to the maximum, but until, it's, until the point that it, that is okay. And switch. No discomfort. This is something to, to keep ourself, our body healthy. It's not supposed to feel any pain. And you'll find once you become used to a range of motion, that's the, kind of the key, then your body will naturally allow you to go a little bit further each time. Try to force it. You're actually going to tear a muscle and become less flexible in the end. That's not really a, a good thing for anybody. Okay, now let's come back here to a neutral position. We're gonna interlace our fingers behind our back, and we're gonna go forward. We're gonna stretch out both of the hamstrings, and we can also stretch out our biceps, our delts, everything here. This one challenge is drop your head down to the ground. And here again, if you're, everybody here is pretty flexible, so if your range of motion, if you get here and you feel a stretch, that's okay, just hang out there. And if you find that you feel uncomfortable with your hands behind the back, you can always just go down here and touch down. This is definitely one, one of the exercises that I need to work on. My range of motion is pretty bad on this one. <laughs> okay, let's come back up to a neutral position. Now we're gonna turn, we're gonna face to our right, coming down to our left knee. Now you wanna make sure you don't leave your knee back too far. We wanna kinda bring the knee up underneath the hip. And here what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on stretching our hip flexor, which is this muscle right here. And Find that all the stuff that we do in functional training is always using the hip flexors, extensors. Our hips are used a lot, and in fighting, almost anything in life. So what we want to do here is we want to contract our abdominal muscles and our glute muscles on our left-hand side, okay? We're trying to keep everything here contracted, holding that contraction, keep the posture upright, and press up with the left hand. If you have tight latch, your arm might go forward, but try to get it straight up. You're gonna get an extra stretch there. and trying to lose that contraction. If I lose the contraction, you'll see this happen. Now I feel no more stretch. It looks the same, but really it's not. It's this. I have to contract here, contract here, and that keeps my muscles stretching. And I want to feel the stretch right here in the front of the body, on the hip flexor. Just got a few more seconds to go. Okay, great job. 
Now we're gonna lower down, left hand to the ground. We're gonna come around and we're gonna grab our right foot, I'm sorry, our left foot <laughs> with our right hand. And we're just gonna feel the stretch now in the quadricep. If you want, you can kind of lean forward a little bit and that'll accentuate the stretch, but you don't have to go too far forward. The main thing is just feel a little bit of a pull. You find you don't have the flexibility to grab it, that's okay. You can just kind of hang out there and continue doing your hip flexor stretch. But if you can, try to grab on and stretch out the quadricep. A lot of uh, people, a lot of athletes, when they finish working out, they, they always forget to stretch. Down. And to be honest, I've been one of them for many years. So this is really bad because now I need to get back to what I've lost for all those years. Yeah. I'm not a very flexible guy, as uh, you can tell. Okay, so now here we're going right to the opposite side, okay? So we're gonna start with our hip flexor. Try to keep the knee right beneath the hip. We're gonna contract the abdominal muscles. Imagine you're trying to turn your zipper up to face you. So you contract your glutes, your abs, and then we're gonna go straight up here with our right hand. You know, if you've watched the other DVDs, I'm sure you've seen how explosive George is, and a lot of that has to do with his hip flexors and his glutes and pretty much all of his legs. But he would lose probably a lot of his explosiveness if he got really tight. If he doesn't keep some flexibility, it decreases all of his athletic attributes. Although it's not the thing that makes him explosive, it's one of the components that gives him that ability. All right, good. And now let's lower down the right hand, and we're gonna reach behind with our left hand and grab our right foot. And you want to, if you can, to try to align the heel with your leg, okay? You don't want your heel kicked out. You want to try to keep everything close there. And if you want to get a little bit more of a stretch, just kind of lean forward, not a lot, just a little bit. And you'll feel right in your quadriceps, in front of your thighs. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to stay facing this way. We're going to put our foot down, and we're going to come into what they call downward dog in yoga but we're gonna lace our left foot behind our right foot, and we're just gonna try to push our right heel down to the ground. It's gonna stretch out the calf of the right leg muscle. If you can, you wanna get your heel to the ground, trying to keep your hips high. And if you find that it won't go all the way down, that's okay, don't force it. out here for about 10 more seconds. Okay, now we're gonna take our left leg, put it on the ground, lace our right leg behind our left leg and try to do the same thing. We're gonna try to work our left heel down to the ground. This one takes a little bit of strength in the shoulders too, but so you might sweat a little bit as you're doing this. It's a little bit more difficult than the other ones, but that's okay. A little bit of effort isn't gonna hurt you. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna put our right foot on the ground and we're just gonna dive down like we're doing a Hindu push-up. We're gonna put our hips down on the ground, rolling over our toes, and we're just gonna look up. And this is gonna stretch out the abdominals and a lot of the muscles in the front of our hips. If you want to, you can sort of contract your glute muscles and try to pin your hips down a little bit more, but it's not really necessary, unless you don't feel anything. Especially after you do, the, if you do this stretch, this stretch after working, uh, after working out your abdominal, you're really gonna feel something. Okay, and now from this position, we're just gonna lower right back, spreading out our knees a little bit, trying to touch our heels to our butt and we're gonna try to reach our fingertips away, dropping our head down on the mat, and we just wanna try to feel the stretch coming right here down the side of the body on our lap muscles. Some people might feel it in the adductors too if you sprawl your legs out more, that's fine. But our main emphasis here is sitting our butt back towards our heels and reaching the fingertips away, head down, just breathing and relaxing. You guys are doing an excellent job. That is a great stretch for the, the lat, lat muscle. Okay, now we're gonna come around facing this way and we're gonna come up in the standing position here. And 
how we're gonna go into basically our side straddle here, okay? Some people call this a split, you can call it whatever you want. We're just gonna squat down, and as we do, we're just gonna start to kick our legs out to the side. And no big deal if you don't have high amounts of flexibility. Everybody here is pretty flexible. But we're gonna start off by going forward, okay? And I don't wanna round the back, I just wanna keep my, my basic body in good alignment, try to work my way out here if possible. Going straight out front. If I can lie all the way down, awesome. If not, if I have to hang out here, and also, if my flexibility puts my legs here, no big deal. We just don't want to collapse here. I want to keep myself nice and upright. And eventually, I should be able to improve my flexibility more and more and more. Okay, and now from here, we're gonna come up to a neutral position. We're gonna turn and face our left leg and try to direct our chin towards our left toes, point our left toes back towards us. Now, we still should feel an adductor stretch, an inner thigh stretch but we also want to feel the hamstrings being stretched here as well now. Now we're trying to breathe and relax. And sometimes people like to say, move with the breath. You hear that a lot in yoga. That's a fine way to stretch too. So when you breathe in, you kind of come out. When you breathe out, you move forward into the stretch. Okay guys, now we're gonna come up to neutral, turn and face the right, and go forward. Remember, pull those toes back towards you. Move your chin towards your toes. You want to feel it throughout the inner thighs and the hamstrings. So as you don't want to keep arching your back on the good way. Mm -hmm. Not rounding your back like a cat. It's not what we want. Yeah. Whether or not I can touch my toes is irrelevant. It's more about how I feel the stretch inside my legs. Okay, great work. Now we're gonna come with our feet together. And now the sit and reach. Traditionally the sit and reach. People just go like this. To touch their toes, they say, good job. I'm not really concerned whether or not you touch your toes. I wanna to see more of this. I wanna see the toes come back towards you so we contract all the muscles here on the front of our shins, okay? Our tibialis muscles, all of this. We wanna contract our quadriceps here. We wanna sit upright, pulling the toes back. We're gonna put our fingertips down and try to push the heel of our palm forward. Done correctly, you should feel a release of these muscles all throughout the posterior chain, all the way from your Achilles all into your erector muscles. If you find you can't even do this, it's just too discomforting, sometimes people like to do this. Just brace. And this usually does a great job for hitting the stretch as well. If this is doing nothing, just pushing forward. Okay, excellent. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our left leg and just get it out of the way. So we're just gonna prop it up. Traditionally, people do a hurdle or stretch for this. And that's okay, but a lot of times it causes us to collapse. We don't really want to do that. We just want to set our leg out the way. And same thing, we're going to contract our right leg now. Toes back towards us, contracting the quadricep. Imagine trying to put the back of your knee onto the ground. You're just going to do posture upright and push forward. Trying to hold here for about 30 seconds. And it doesn't have to be exact. It's best if you just move along with us. But if you want to do this on your own, you can hold it longer. Each stretch, or you can go a little shorter. Just whatever feels comfortable. But 30 seconds is usually ideal. And if you find you have some free time, you want to go back to the whole routine again, that's not going to hurt anything. Okay, come back to neutral. We're going to bring the left leg in, move the right leg out, pulling our toes back towards us, contracting the quadriceps, posture upright, trying to move forward. There again, we should feel everything on the back side of our left leg releasing. Excellent, Victoria. Nice, George. And try to imagine you're pushing in right here. There, and you're trying to lift up throughout. Good. The posture is very important. Yes, it's very important. It's everything with this. Alrighty, good job. Now we can close up our legs here, okay? And let's go ahead and flip around this way and we're just gonna lie down, okay? So we're gonna lie down here flat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first do our glute stretch, okay, for our butt. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna come up, we're gonna grab our knee, and we're gonna pull it up towards our chest. Ideally here, we just wanna hold here for 30 seconds. Some people like to bring their head up to their knee. That's okay, but there's no reason to really force it here. We're trying to, our emphasis is here on our butt. We've been using our butt a lot too. It's probably the strongest muscle in the body. So you have to really be sure if you're working it correctly, make sure you're stretching it too. 
And from here, we're gonna make a quick transition. We're gonna grab our knee with our right hand and we're gonna pull it across our body at a, on a diagonal like this. Putting our left hand on the ground, we're gonna just turn towards our left. We should feel the hip extensors here now stretching, okay? Right here on the outside of our hips. This is a very important stretch. Just try to breathe and relax. Keep your mind focused and try to focus on getting a good stretch the whole entire time. Okay, now back to center. We're gonna extend the left leg straight. Now we're gonna take the right leg and we're gonna pull it into our chest and do the same thing, opposite side. So starting off just doing the glute stretch. Like I said, if you feel that you have a little more energy and you wanna work a little bit harder, you can try to touch your nose up here to your knee. That's not necessary. You really just want to try to make sure you really cup your knee and pull it up high. Okay, and now we're going to grab our right knee with our left hand, pulling it across our body. Trying to touch down to the ground. If you can't get it to the ground, it's okay. Right arm's out to the side. We're looking to our right. Pulling with our left arm, our right knee over to our left. And we're almost there, guys. We're nearing the end. Okay, good. Come back to center. Now we're just going to flip it around real quick. And this is a way I really like to finish my workouts. Um, I think it's just good, and it's, it's good to have the, the release of tension. And it's something that's very important to learn. I think you'll, you'll notice that with fighting, tension is what fatigues a lot of people a lot of Absolutely. times. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to lie down and we're gonna make a fist out of our body, okay? So when I say clinch, you're just gonna make, you're gonna to try to cause as much tension throughout your whole entire body as you can. And when I say relax, you're gonna breathe out and just relax. You can take a couple deep breaths. Then when I say clinch, you're gonna take a deep breath in, clinch. Then when I say relax, you're gonna breathe out and just kind of melt into the mat, okay? So let's everybody take a deep breath in, clinch. Relax. Breathe in deep, clench, relax. Okay, we have three more of these. Breathe in deep, clench, relax. Two more times. Breathe in deep, clench, relax, here comes our last one, deep breath, clench, relax, now just take your time. Can you can take a few seconds to relax in here. Yeah, you can even take a few minutes if you feel, feel like it. You can stay here as long as you want. Just kind of reward yourself for all the hard work you've done all week. And when you're ready, you can come up and that pretty much finishes the workout. But if you want to stay there a little bit longer, that's totally okay. This is, this is very important because every day, my body receives a lot, a lot of impact. Either be because, of the, because of the strike, because of the takedown, also, the, 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 all the mechanic of the movement of, in martial art that I'm doing. And uh, it's important to have something that, that releases release all the, the, those tensions that I have. So to, 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 to keep the balance. This, this is very important to keep my body very healthy. You know, if I would never do that, it would short up my career. These kind of training make my career longer. You know, you keep me healthy. And that's why it's so important for me. That's why you guys should do it. It's important. Every time you train hard, we train hard, it's true, but we have also to train, we have also to train smart, which is even more important. Congratulations, everyone, and 